Hey, my name is Lizzie Smiley, and I absolutely love helping people connect with their calling and all the tools they need to kick roadblocks and excuses right out the door so they can cultivate the life they dream about. If you want to launch, grow, pivot, or scale your Etsy shop, or you've always wanted to develop the mindset and skills to run your own business, then I'm your girl. I've had that entrepreneurial spirit going strong since my very first lemonade stand, and now I'm a work-at-home mama with multiple online companies and a full-time Etsy shop, all while being present with my kids for the everyday chaos and most important milestones. On this podcast, we'll talk about all things business, mindset, Etsy, creativity, dazzling our customers, and so much more. There's plenty of room at this table for you, so scooch on in and let's go. I'm holding nothing back. Welcome to How to Sell Your Stuff on Etsy. I'm so glad you're here. Hey, you guys. Welcome back to the show this week. I am so excited for you to listen to this conversation because objectively, if you clicked on this episode, you're interested in wholesale and it does not disappoint. So if you like how fast I talk and think and just go, 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 I've met my soulmate in that. Allison is the exact same way. Please forgive me for the few times I accidentally cut her off. We're both just going a million miles a minute. You cannot speed up this episode. You're going to have to slow it down or it's going to sound like Alvin and the Chipmunks. But anyway, such a, such a fun episode. And I'll tell you more about Allison in a second. I'm trying to think. I do not have any updates for you guys at all. Last week was the Micro Niche Magic um, SEO workshop. Went phenomenally well. We had an absolute blast. And if you wanted to purchase the replay, that is linked down below. But other than that, there is no news. And we are just like diving into it today. This is like a crazy week of, I think I have like six podcast recordings this week. It's utter, it's utter nuttiness. Um, but I'm finally getting ahead before we get ready to move because the house goes on the market in four days. So no, right? No more than that. Sorry, in a week. But we have to get out of here in four days so that everything, the cleaners can come in and the picture takers can come in and the, all of the things. Utter chaos. But um, super excited to chat about wholesale and fair and wholesaling on Etsy and things like that. So let me tell you a bit about Allison. Um, her career was in private school admissions, and she made jewelry and oyster trinket dishes as a creative outlet. She never intended to turn that into a business, and she calls herself a reluctant entrepreneur, which I thought was super cute. Um, she's obviously doing it very well. So she became an accidental business owner after putting some of her items in her mom's store, and they sold better than expected. Her mom has a brick and mortar location. She went full time with her business in February of 2021, six months after launching on Fair and Shopify. And she does sell primarily um, wholesale on fair with some Shopify, some in-person markets. And she recently opened an Etsy shop to diversify platforms. Um, she's going to share about her, the mistakes she made as she stumbled into business ownership, but ultimately selling wholesale changed her life and took her from a hobby maker to a full-time business owner. And she's super eager to share um, with others so they can expand their businesses and also do it with fewer fumbles. <laughs> her, her, her wording is so cute. Um, since joining FAIR in 2021, she's done business with over 600 retail stores and 15 countries. Utter craziness. So please help me welcome Allison to the podcast. Allison, yay. Welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have this Thank conversation. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. You're totally breaking us in on a whole new topic. You know this, right? Yes, wholesale. <laughs> I'm super, super pumped. We, um, First of all, thank you. So you guys need to know, Allison reached out via the podcast application form that is down there for all of you in the show notes of every episode. And she's like, hey, I've got a unique story to share here that extends past Etsy. And so that is how Allison and I cross paths. And I was like, whoa, this is so cool because I do get DMs like, hey, Lizzie, do you have any wholesale tips? And I'm like, nope, zero. <laughs> I got nothing. And from now on, I'm going to be like, listen to this podcast episode. So <laughs> Allison, you got to get us caught up. Tell us your yeah. story. Okay. But we got to start with the art first. How did you become an oyster jewelry dish artist? I almost can't even say that. Yes, oyster I know. Jewelry oyster dish trinket art. dishes, oyster jewelry dishes, um, just my, my random little niche that I'm in. So I was originally kind of playing around with making jewelry. Um, I I had a completely different career, was totally fine with, with being in that, had no plans of uh, having a business. I'm a reluctant entrepreneur, I think you could say. 
<laughs> I, I would never have called myself an entrepreneur, had uh, no plans for that. And I was just have liked having a creative outlet, you can say. And my, my mom has a retail store and a very busy touristy area. And so I would just kind of make jewelry and say, here, mom, put this in your store. And it would sell, you know, here and there. And then I um, just decided to start making something that would go along with the jewelry. And I got into these oyster jewelry dishes randomly. And I put a few of those in the store and that's what ended up taking off. I did not want to be on Etsy. I didn't want a website. I basically didn't want to ship anything. That was, for whatever reason, daunting to me. I just wanted it to make my, make my crafts and here you can buy them or not. But I just, everything else was not in my plans. Her customers started asking for a website and that's kind of how that happened. I made a Shopify didn't go the Etsy route because I was under the impression I would just be flooded with orders <laughs> immediately <laughs> after joining Etsy, which I now know from following uh, your podcasts and other YouTube that that is not the case. But I was afraid of that happening. So I just made my little Shopify. And then uh, about a week after that, my mom said, you should really just get on FAIR, which is what we're going to talk a lot about today, which is a wholesale platform. And I'm familiar with wholesale because I am sort of a buyer for the store. I help her find new brands and I look on Etsy, I look on Instagram and all on FAIR for, for new brands for the store. And so that was more comfortable for me as a platform. So I just hopped on and the next thing I knew I had two full-time jobs. <laughs> so that's uh will lead us into my my now business that I do full time that I never intended to do but it's been it's been fun it's been a wild ride how long ago did you oh I don't even know where to start okay when did you start first putting the oyster trinket dishes in your mom's store like how long ago was that that was probably in 20 I think it was 2019 I put the first oyster dishes in there and they sold pretty well. And then 2020, we still had a decent amount of business in 2020, the summer really? we're in Bar Harbor, Maine. And I think a lot of people were not traveling internationally anymore. They were looking for more small towns, national parks. We have Acadia National Park. So we still oh, have Acadia, a, yes. quite, yeah, we still have quite a lot of business. And so I think she sold about like 400 of them that summer and said, <laughs> get you need, I know. And so she was my, my one customer. And so I just wasn't expecting it. Um, I got my oyster shells off of Etsy and then would order more and more and more that were for crafters. And it just turned into a whole thing. So 2021 in August, I finally made a website after tons of people kept asking where they could buy them. And so it was August 1st. I launched my Shopify. August 11th, I got on fair. <gasps> and the following <sighs> February of 2022, I went full time. So, <laughs> um, okay. How many of these do you typically sell? I see wholesale, so it's different, but like if you had to average it out, how many are you selling a month? Um, a th over a thousand, over a thousand, I'd say. Which means, wait, hold on a second. How many does that mean you're making a day? Uh, and I mean, I'm Ooh. sure you do it in batches, but like what? Let's see. That's th at least 33 a day. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you are making these by hand, right? I do. Yes. Do you have any help? No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. I'm a, a lone woman business. Um, my plan. So I, I'm moving in a year. I'm currently, um, as I mentioned, we're up in Maine, a really small town. Most of our residents are seasonal. So it's even really hard to get employees for the store. We don't have employees at the store. Yeah. Um, I say we just because I help so much with it, but my mom's store. And so housing is a big thing here. There's no office space. There's just really no workforce for me to pull from. So we've decided to relocate the store to a year round location. So we'll be moving it to Florida next year. My goal and what I need to do is once I relocate, I need to hire. <laughs> so it's just the next daunting thing, but it's just a part of scaling the business and it's not sustainable the amount of hours I work a day, but I still mm -hmm. prefer it to working for someone else because it's mine and it's fun. So that's, you know, definitely yeah. something to be aware of, you know, for anyone who I think goes into whether it be Etsy or selling wholesale, whatever it may be that you're just, you have something you love doing, you want to start selling it, it could get huge and you don't expect it. So something to be prepared for. 
We definitely, with the sign shop, got to the point, like that was very much, it was Mm -hmm. not sustainable. And we had to make a decision, like, are we investing in like a $60,000 machine and completely pivoting or are we going to do something else? So Mm -hmm. I, that is so relatable. Also, Allison, your town sounds exactly like where we spend the other half of the year in Wisconsin. It's like, everybody is seasonal. They are dead the rest of the year. They can't get any help. They can't, you Mm -hmm. can't get any housing. You can't get Mm -hmm. like it is. And then when everyone's there, it's such a problem because we've like overrun the place and every, all the workers are exhausted. It's such a, so that is so interesting. That's exactly. The store isn't even open right now. We close for six months. We're only open six months of the year. And so, you know, it allows me to stay home and just make shells all day long in the winter, but it's... (laughs) There's definitely nobody here to help me. So I'm coming to visit. I want, I'm coming. To, you teach me how to do it. That sounds fun. Don't sit and listen to podcasts or make sure. Right, exactly. That's what I do. I put on YouTube and I, I listen to you and some other great people. And I just, I work and learn while working. And so it's been. That is a riot. I will say that was my favorite part of painting all the time was like, I was never behind on a podcast and all that, but yeah. you know, pros and cons. Okay. 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 So um, what, your mom was the one who, who I'm going to say bullied you to get on fair right she away. Did. She peer pressured me for sure. She yeah. did. <laughs> <laughs> but like, what was the mentality of like, oh, you know what? Let, let's go wholesale instead of trying right. something like Etsy to begin with. Because fairs, I, I love wholesale, but like they're, and you'll talk about it, but like um, their commission is much more expensive than Etsy's. It is. It is. It's a completely different world. It's not what people maybe typically start with. Um, It was more familiar to me. It was a platform I was familiar with. It's also uh, less shipping or I thought so in my mind, instead of sending individual items, you're sending a box of multiple I, I not, but I didn't expect that I was going to get I'm as like, many orders. I honestly thought it was going to be like right? <laughs> someone orders 20 once a month, you know, easy. <laughs> I did not know what was going to happen. So, but the thing is, there's nothing, I mean, shipping is so easy. Not once you do it, it's just something that's scary if it's new and being, you know, on a website is scary when it's new and it's, it's all fine once you figure it out, but so that's just kind of how I ended up with wholesale, which is peer pressure and being familiar with the fair platform. Um, but there were definitely things that I I didn't do correctly jumping into wholesale. So that's that's why I wanted to do this. It's yeah. just to uh, I would love to to share an option for people to grow their business in a different way, another income stream, but to maybe avoid some of the mistakes that I made. So. <laughs> No, and we are so grateful. Like this is going to be so, it's already packed with information, but it's going to be so packed. I'm so excited. Okay. So let's just start with, tell us about FAIR. Mm-hmm. How does it work? Like, what does it cost? What are the pros and cons? Yes. Just the absolutely. Basic. Let's start there. Yeah. So for anyone listening who's, who's on Etsy, I'm assuming most of your listeners, mm-hmm. it, the platform works very similarly. So it's basically a, a, a marketplace where you have thousands of retailers being your customers, similar to Etsy, you've got millions of customers coming on to buy maybe a specific gift or something like that when they're coming on Etsy. On fair, you have thousands and thousands of retailers coming on to look for new vendors for their store. So they're on there with that purpose. And so fair then creates this platform for all different types of makers, businesses to, you know, have their products on there for the stores. And they're in all over the world, multiple different countries can buy from you. Um, it's now kind of a household name among retailers, kind of like Etsy is. It's almost like retailers expect you to be on fair now if you're a, a small business who sells wholesale. Just like if you're a maker, people say, oh, I'm sure you're on Etsy, right? <laughs> it's just it's kind of assumed <laughs> now. So it is, it's like that. So that's one of the pros. And it's for my mom and, and I, when we look for new vendors too, we kind of hope or assume and hope that they're on fair just because it makes it so easy. So similar to Etsy, people can go on and fill their carts with items from multiple different vendors at a time and then just do one big checkout or check out individually. Um, it just makes it really easy. The pros of fair, and we will get into the commission. That's one of the cons, but keeping in mind, this is what they cover. I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the pros is that you have thousands and thousands of people all over the world who are just coming to you. They're looking for new products of all different kinds. It's not even a specific gift. They need all kinds of things for their store, for their customers looking for multiple different things. So, um, you know, that's just easy. That's nice to begin with. And then you have 
fair covering things like uh, returns. So they cover, there's free returns for your um, first order with a new seller. So someone who buys from me for the first time, if they don't like it, if it doesn't sell, they have a certain amount of time to see if it sells in their store or not, they can send it back oh, wow. and fair will refund them, but you don't have to pay them. Oh, back. wow. So that's nice. It makes it easy for people to try your product, try something new. Things like the shipping is really easy. The international shipping is so easy. Um, they also cover something called net 60 terms for retailers, meaning that retailers don't have to pay for your items for 60 days. So let's say they're buying a bunch of new stock for their store. It can be hard if it's a new store, especially to buy everything all at once. So it gives them time to kind of stagger what they or how much inventory they're buying, if that makes sense. So you can buy from me okay, as a retailer and I get paid from fair okay. right away, but they don't have to pay fair for 60 days, if that makes sense. That's amazing. So fair is making sure that I'm being paid. They guarantee on-time payouts, but they're giving a little buffer for retailers to not have to pay right away. Wow. There's love on both sides. I love, love on that. both sides. Exactly. So things like that make it easy. Um, they provide, you know, protection from fraud, late payments, decline payments. Um, if customers try to back out of an order when you've already made it, things like that are, are protected on fair. So if you were doing a uh, wholesale on your website, those might be some things that you run into. Mm -hmm. um, but fair has your back in those ways. I'll say. Do you see so, shop suspensions on fair? I am curious about that. Like how we see that on Etsy, a lot of shops getting suspended when they're new. No, no. If there are, um, there are terms of service. So you, for example, aren't supposed to take business off of fair. So if a retail store finds you on fair, you can't direct them off. So there may be a case if they find out that you did that that you could be suspended. You also have to have consistent pricing across platforms. So whatever your wholesale price is on fair needs to be the same on your website. Oh, wow. Um, you can't market up to cover catalog. Your yeah, things like that. So if you're just not following along with those rules, then then maybe, but they, I know that Etsy, that's a big, a big thing where they go through and. We can kind of get it fixed, stores. but it takes weeks. Yeah, like it's a, right. like an irritating, it's right. a stupid thing that we should, you know, and I don't like mm -hmm. to dog on Etsy. I really appreciate them, but it's one of those things like fix this guys. This yes. is ridiculous. Well, and I, there's things with fair. I feel the same way. I mean, overall okay. wonderful. And thank you for, you know, bringing this into my life. However, there are things that aren't great and aren't perfect. So yeah, that, that can bring me to the cons for sure. Okay. Uh, and I will say too, as uh, from having experience on the retail side, being a, a buyer for a retail store, we now are almost hesitant to buy off a of fair just because it just is more effort to create an account on someone's, you know, wholesale website and keep track of what was my password here. And what was that, you know, yeah. it's just all unfair. So I'm disappointed if someone isn't unfair, but also I get it, you know, when they want to control their own thing and not have commission. So, but I will say that that is something that we can be, people can be turned away if it's, if you're not on there, just because it's kind of a household name. So, and we're familiar with it and comfortable with it. The cons, the commission is the big one. I know we've talked about, so they do have a 15% commission. Keeping in mind too, that your wholesale pricing is basically 50% off of your retail pricing. So you now, so let's say my shelf, for example, is 28, my retail or wholesale price would then be 14 per unit. So now you have 15% commission on top of that. Um, if it's a store's first time buying from you, they'll also take $10 in addition. And then every um, repeat order will just be the 15% commission. There is a way to get 0% commission if you direct your own traffic to FAIR. So there's everyone has a FAIR direct link, which Etsy does too. They have a direct link too that you avoid some fees, right? I think it's yes, so similar to, to uh, temporarily. Yeah, they're testing okay. it. I'm wondering if they got that from Fair. Oh, I see. I okay. really like it. I, I, I see. Yeah, so they do have zero. that. It's like discounted, but yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so Fair has the Fair Direct link. There's a widget you can even put on your website, which I've done. So, um, and you know, your bio on Instagram, you can send email marketing that kind of thing with your Fair Direct link. If someone clicks your link and then buys directly that way, it's an automatic zero commission. Wow. Um, however, if they just see that, oh, you have it and then just go on fair <laughs> and look you okay. up, then there's not, um, they need to click the link. You can also add in the customer yourself on fair, which you just need their name and email address. And you then have to send them a marketing email through fair's marketing tool. 
Um, so they have their own built-in email marketing tool within FAIR. So you have to add them as a customer and then email within FAIR to just okay. auto-generate no commission. Um, so the con-, the con is that there is the commission. However, that is something that you'll see if you get into wholesale, if you have a rep, there are things called wholesale reps where they go around two shows and represent multiple brands for you. You would pay about the same 15, 70% or so to the rep um, and credit card processing fees. There's a payment processing fee too, for fair, I forgot to mention. That can be a little higher or lower depending on when you get your payouts. I do next day payouts, so I ship it and then the next day I get the payment. And so it's 3.5% that I pay for that. You can do a 30 day or a 60 day payout and it'll be as low as 1.9, I believe. So it just depends on what you can afford to to do. If you can wait, then wait. There's also, if you were to go the wholesale show route, instead of being on fair or in addition to, you'll have a booth fee. So it's like with anything, you have different fees just to be there in front of thousands of customers. So it's a con and not every product will have the margin that will allow yes. for wholesale. And that's another big thing. Um, but if you can, if you can afford to do it, it's, it's great. You know, for me, it took my hobby to a business completely changed my life, but you do have to make sure that you can afford to do it. And that's where pricing your items for wholesale will come in, which I'll talk about a little bit later too, but that's just oh is some of the cons um, with the, with the uh, zero commission, the fair direct, there has been a lot of pushback lately because they've changed how you get the zero percent commission. Um, it used to be as simple as if you could prove that you messaged someone even on Instagram and they didn't use your link, that they would reverse it and give you and take the commission away. Now it's it's trickier. You have to with the whole you have to email them through fair first. There's just oh, a wow. lot of a lot of pushback with that. So I'm I'm hopeful because people have been really vocal on the fair Facebook group about how they don't like the new terms that they'll listen to everybody and go back to what wasn't broken to begin with. But, you know, like with anything, like with Etsy, there's things that they change that we don't like. And sometimes they hear you. Sometimes they don't. I wonder (laughs) if it like wasn't profitable enough for that. Like, I wonder if that was starting to hurt their bottom line. And so they had to kind of put through something in there Yeah. because I'm thinking like, wow, how do they make money? They don't make anything. They, they're losing money on those transactions. They are. I think the idea is that you're bringing in new customers who will then buy from other people on fair, but, but you're right. I mean, there's obviously a reason that we don't know that they're deciding to go this route and it probably does have to do with that, but it's just been a little bit trickier to prove that you drove the traffic if they don't use your link. And if you don't email them right away, if you add the customer, that kind of thing. All right, guys, if you've been here for a bit, you've probably heard me say that if you want to beat saturation in the biggest Etsy niches, you've got to find a way in by using micro niches. So a micro niche is a smaller niche within a niche. So for example, the mom niche is massive, right? And if you get on Etsy as a new seller and try to sell a mom sweatshirt, you're probably never going to get found or even make a sale because the competition is just too crazy. But if you pare down to a micro niche, such as like a NICU mom or catcher mom or doxy mom, now you're onto something. You have a better chance of penetrating the market because there's still some demand. People are searching for those phrases, but there aren't as many sellers trying to compete in those micro niches. So how do you find them? How do you how do you go about finding a micro niche? One main way that I find them is by using Sales Samurai, which is a third party tool that gives me SEO clues like big time. And you can see my YouTube tutorial um, to try it. There's like a three day free trial in the um, that's available in the show notes link if you like. Look at the look at the video, get the trial, get the discount code. But I've also created for you a free list. I've done the research for you, and it's a list of 100 keywords in various micro niches that all have demand without crazy competition. And you can snag that also in the show notes if you want to get a sneak peek at what the data looks like and how uh, where you can find some areas of opportunity that I have found in my constant SEO research. I hope it helps. And more importantly, I hope it inspires you to hunt for the micro niches because that is your ticket to crazy success on Etsy. <laughs> Fair sounds like Etsy, like when it grows up, like, like fair Mm -hmm. is what Etsy wants to be when it grows up because (laughs) I'm hearing like already built in email marketing. That's incredible. Yes, that is really nice. Like 
you've already got the perfect customer, that, like it's Etsy at scale. So you're not selling mm -hmm. one-offs to the public. You're going direct, mm -hmm. you're going business to business, which probably I would hope, I mean, it's still humans, but like increases the professionalism factor. It does. It absolutely yeah. does. Yes. Of like so. reviews and people complaining and what they have to say and how they're doing it. Absolutely. You don't deal with the nasty messages. Well, I'm sure some people do, but hardly ever. I mean, it's business, so yeah, it's, it's business owners and business owners. And so, you know, for that reason, you know, your customer service needs to be really great. And the idea yes. is that you're forming long-term relationships. And so, you know, again, to go along with the commission, you do have to make sure that, that you can afford to do that with your pricing. But the idea is that they're bulk orders and that they're that they're reordering. So I think it's it's a volume game. So that's where your money comes in is with volume. You're not just selling them, you know, five two to five pieces, you're selling multiple. So I'll have an order of 20 to 100. So that's and You Allison, I didn't put this on the list, but let's chat about this real quick. So you said mm -hmm. it's a lot like Etsy. So you open up your own shop and my guess mm -hmm. is you have you have a storefront and you're adding listings to it and like your Correct. own branding? Correct. Mhm. Mm Yep. Okay. So you have a, a banner at the top, kind of like on, on Etsy, a little uh, about me section right below that, your bio, very similar. And then all of your products are below categorized on the left. It's, it looks very much like an Etsy. So it'll be a familiar platform for you. And um, similarly, they, they push you up in the algorithm when you add new products. <laughs> they want you to keep adding new products and things like that. Spend time in your shop. Um, there's a, a messaging center. You can message with the customers that way through fair, like on Etsy, but the, the email marketing platform is really nice. You can email all your customers. You can see who of your customers, um, they have to be customers who have already bought from you in the past to see, but you can see who has an open cart in case you want to, you know, push them with, with an email. Um, so that is nice and it's all built in similar to star seller. They have top shop and there's certain uh, metrics that you have to meet to be top shop every quarter that can, you know, push you up. So it's, it's a very similar platform in that way. So it'll be more comfortable, a, an easy transition, I'd say for your listeners who are already on Etsy, who want to. It's just, try uh, and, and I think this is a good thing, but like, since we're now going, we're like, everything is leveling up, which means that you can't afford for your listings to not be really, really mm -hmm. good looking. Like, mm -hmm. like photos have to be top notch. Yes. You've got to have everything in the photo gallery, in the description. You've, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure it's this, I'm sure it's similar, but people on Etsy can kind of get away with maybe just one picture or just hacking through it. Are Absolutely. you seeing, you've got to like level it up. You need there? to level it up. You, okay. Exactly. Because you need to make it look like a product. This isn't a craft mm -hmm. item. It's a product that a boutique would want to have in their store because they need to sell it to their customers. And so it does need to be leveled up and you need to have the same, you know, specific product descriptions, multiple pictures, maybe describe how it's packaged so that they know how we package for display. Um, and you may decide to change your packaging for wholesale too, knowing that it'll be out in a store versus just being sent to a customer. So, um, but absolutely make it as nice as possible. Great photos. You don't want them to be turned away thinking oh, it won't look nice in their store. Yours are insane. Actually, I got her permission, you guys, for the, any, if you like look on Instagram or on YouTube or on the show notes, like she let me use, um, her pictures for the graphics because I wanted you to see how spectacular this product is. They are so oh, thank breathtaking. You. No, well, I mean, I'm just like, I'm not going to find a stock image that's going to begin to be okay <laughs> for this. Um, so you guys should take a look at it, but you know what else? And you kind of piqued my curiosity. What do you mean about the, so when I hear, um, I'm, it just might apply different roles. So when I hear mm -hmm. packaging, I'm thinking about like the unboxing experience of my mm -hmm. business to consumer product and wanting that to be special right. that I feel like wholesale, that's maybe less necessary, but you're exactly like with okay. Etsy. I love if I order something on Etsy, it's packaged nicely. It's a whole yes. experience. Like you said, the nice thank you card and maybe the tissue paper. When you're selling wholesale, it's about getting the product there safely, <laughs> not <laughs> cracked or chipped, just a lot of bubble, paper, the packing slip, <laughs> box okay. it up. That's it. You're just okay. shipping a, a bulk amount of products to the retail store. They don't need it to be fluffy. It's more stuff for them to throw away. <laughs> you know, like they've got boxes and boxes of inventory in the back and they don't want all of that. So keep it simple with your shipping packaging and then it display packaging is what you will want to focus on instead. That was my question. Yeah. So are you including different elements though, to help them display it properly? 
You can. So depending on the product um, and also just how the the store might want to display. When I first started, I used to offer uh, options like you could have it gift boxed or you could have it in a, a little bag. Um, I found it was just more effort and time and money to do the boxes. And a lot of people just didn't have the space to have multiple shells boxed and out on their shelves. So I now send them just unboxed with a little just organza bag. They can bag it up in at checkout or okay. put them out that way. Um, so you have to consider people. These are retail stores that have shelves with just multiple items. Most things are not in boxes when they're out. Uh, we've also seen that with customers uh, or with vendors that we get in our store that they'll start out sending boxes and then they all of a sudden don't. And then the candles used to have lids and then now they don't. And then <laughs> so you, start, you start to pair back, which is totally fine. And, and that's fine because we can't keep multiple gift boxes for all different products in our back stock anyway. There's just, we have so much storage available to us and it's, uh, so sometimes you just may not even need it or you can provide an option. Also, some retail stores don't like to have things, um, you know, just completely labeled and they might decide to, to put the, like an info card or something at checkout. So maybe a, a little bio card that you can send or a okay. business card, something like that, but they may not be used. A lot of retail stores don't want people to go to them to buy your product and not directly to you. So that's yeah, something. They don't want you, they don't want, they don't want the exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 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 Yeah. Wow. I have so many questions. Okay. So you've kind of already talked about um, profit margin. That just seems obvious. Like, yeah, I could have never done that with the signs unless we'd moved to a machine, but also right. even we would have needed a machine to make them. Like we would have had to have, we couldn't have been making them, like building them by hand. Right. So it's all super interesting. And like also being able to pay for labor, making sure that you're calculating enough in there to pay. Because like, yeah. it's one thing for yourself, Allison, when you hire someone else, right? That now you're paying someone's labor exactly, fee. Exactly, exactly. So you do have to price accordingly. I, that's, so that's one big mistake that I made. Luckily, I, I got lucky that the price that I just chose out of thin air worked out okay, <laughs> but I okay. didn't really go into this with a formula and you you do need the formula. When I first started with the shells, I just kind of looked at the market. What are people pricing them at? Some were way higher, some were way lower, and I just picked somewhere in the middle okay. and went with that. <laughs> so again, I didn't expect this to be a business with business expenses and all that. Um, <laughs> so, oops, um, I, but I got lucky. Um, however, you want to make sure to price for wholesale that you are calculating every material cost. So all of your cost of materials, everything that goes into making your item and labor. So decide how much, you know, your hourly rate is for you or the person making the item and then how long it took to make that item. Mm -hmm. So if it was $15 and you're doing 20 minutes, it's $5 for that one item. So add that in for wholesale to get your, your retail price first, you'll multiply that number that you calculated by four. And then half of that would be your wholesale price. Some, in some cases, people will do 40% off retail as wholesale, but it's usually it's 50% off is kind of the standard. Um, so your retail price would then be four times all of your cost of materials and your labor. I know that some people, when they're just expecting, I'm only going to sell on Etsy or I'm only going to sell at, you know, in-person markets or, you know, whatever, they'll multiply that by two or three. That won't get you enough to mm -hmm. wholesale, basically. So hopefully there's maybe a little bit of room for you to rework your pricing so that you're making more. If you go into wholesale or jump on fair, not having that pricing reworked, it's really hard to change that later because now customers are used to it. It's not like on Etsy where if I put my pricing on, I can decide, oh, I did not price this right. I need to bump my price by $5 or whatever it may be. Yeah. There could be some repeat customers who will notice, but for the most part, you're getting all new people. On FAIR, it's repeat customers and they will be upset if all of a sudden there's a big price jump. It's yes. one thing. You can raise it by a dollar you know, a year or whatever you need to do, but once you set your pricing, you need to stick with that for as much as possible. Is there so a calculator sure you want to use now? Like have you found that? a calculator or did you, I'm just wondering if there's like any where I can point people, we can point people like to be able to calculate that properly. I don't have an actual um, calculator. There, there are a couple really great YouTube videos that I've found that I could send to you if we want to link. Sure, I can put them in the show really notes. broken down. 
And one of them, I think, actually does have a spreadsheet they make. I, I can send those to you when we're done to put in the show notes if you want. But but basically, it is just making sure that your markup is is high. You need to mark it up by by four to get your retail and then 50% off of that would be wholesale. So the labor, for example, when you're, again, say it's 15, just to throw it out there is your hourly rate for yourself or whoever. If it took me 20 minutes to make one of my shells, that's $5, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> $5 for... But don't ask me to do the math, Allison. <laughs> you'll end up in Zimbabwe too. Yeah. So that's what would go into my uh, initial calculation. So I do my cost of materials plus $5. And then once your wholesale price would then be two times that. So the first time that that's going, the first time is going toward the person making it. The second time is going to you as a business owner. Then when you sell it as that's your new pricing, when you sell it for retail pricing on your website or in-person markets, you're now getting four times that. So your pricing is just helping you out across the board. So even if you decide not to price for wholesale, I would go ahead and probably just mark up your cost of materials and labor by four. And that'll help cover all your business expenses and things too. Because I was I was doing more of like a three range before I okay. decided to be more intentional about it. But, but you also need to check the, the market, market and make sure. Yeah, 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 that's where checking the market. So do your calculation, then go and check the market and see if it could even support that pricing. Some Mm -hmm. items will just not be able to because people won't spend that. And that's fine. Maybe there's ways to get your costs down um, or I don't know, labor down, whatever it may be. But some items just won't be good for wholesale. Yeah. No, that's that's so great though. I love that. Do you get overwhelmed? Like, I don't know, think, think back to your first really big kind of overwhelming order that came in wholesale. Like, what did you do? How do you, what? Yeah. How does that work? My so I, <laughs> mine wasn't um, one big order that came in. That was my most overwhelming moment. It was the the influx of orders <laughs> that was coming and just the volume well, of orders. Plural. Plural. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't the size of them. It was just the the quantity of orders. When I first got on Fair, so Fair sends a weekly email to all of their retailers showing like the the new sellers that are on Fair. And they'll show, uh, you know, highlight a few stores, they'll put the pictures and they kind of list others down below. And I, I'll never forget, I got on fair, I was accepted, loaded my products, great. And I honestly thought, well, maybe I'll make enough to cover my, my car payment or something like this. I'll make a couple sales a month. This will be fun. I'll have my products in a couple stores. And I'll never forget, I'm sitting in my office and I get a text from my mom who sent me a screenshot of an email she got from FAIR, that weekly email that had my product photos highlighted as kind of a spotlight, you know, with the others. And she said, get ready. (laughs) And I went on FAIR and you can see, I started getting email alerts that I was getting sales. And I went on and you can see how many people are in your shop currently and it was just going up and up and up and up and up and up. And I was like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> Stop. Because I was, again, not prepared. I had no inventory, everything made to order. So because I started my shop on fair as made to order, it continues to be made to order because I've never caught up. <laughs> so it just continued. So I've never had inventory. I've never had back stock. If you have a product where it's possible for you to hold inventory where you can pull from and then just replenish that, that's ideal. I <laughs> recommend you do that, <laughs> but that's not what happened to me. And I had a full-time job. I luckily had a, an amazing boss a lovely woman who was very supportive of side hustles and, you know, me doing my thing. She had a side hustle. I had a side hustle. And so we happened to be really slow at that time. And she was like, just go home. And she sent me home, which I know is not normal, but she was amazing. And we worked at a school and it was the summer. There was nothing going on. So (laughs) she just said, it's fine. And just go figure this out. And then come back. So I don't think she knew that I would eventually quit my job, but she was supportive of my, of my side hustle at the time. So I went home and just, just started working. And then at the time it was, I would get up at 4 AM, 5 AM. I would be up until midnight and I would go home at lunch. I would finish an order in the morning, go to work, go home at lunch, package the order, ship it on the way back to work, go home from work, keep working (laughs) until midnight. 
Now, I will say I don't have kids. I don't have a family at home. So I'm, I was able to do that. <laughs> so I know that's not the case for everybody. But I was able to just spend every waking moment doing that. And, you know, these orders were placed and I had to fill them. So what I did, you can also um, change your processing time on fair. Okay. So you can say it's currently takes me, you know, one to two weeks. It's a range. It's, you know, seven to 10 days or 11 to 14 days or whatever, 30 plus days. And so I just kept bumping it out, bumping it out. And you can also change your minimum order requirement. Okay. That was my other so question. I'm like, that's another thing with pricing. <laughs> yeah. When you were talking about, um, you know, how do you make it, you know, how do you afford it to sell wholesale? Um, it is a volume game. So that's where their minimum order will come in. So people aren't just buying five or, you know, to okay. try that you can require them to buy a certain amount to make it worthwhile to you. Okay. Um, you can also use that to slow down orders. <laughs> so if you need to, so you can open or close the floodgates, you can make it zero minimum, which I actually started with a zero thinking it'll just make it easy for people to, to try it out. And if they like it, they'll buy more, but you can start it at a, a hundred. Um, you don't want people buying their gifts um, at wholesale pricing, which can happen. Right. You know, retail store owners are just people too, that have gift needs too. So you don't want that. So ideally zero is not the way you want to go, but it's not a bad idea at the beginning. Keep it low zero to a hundred. Um, but if it gets to be too busy and you're overwhelmed, raise your minimum order amount, push out your processing time. And then the buyers will know it's going to take three to four weeks to get my order. And I have to spend $500, but I'm willing to do that. And then it's, you're willing to fill that order because it's a good order. But I did have to do that. And then if it slows <laughs> down, then I can open it up again. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, uh, it got busy. I just wasn't expecting it. I wasn't prepared. So I had to just be prepared <laughs> just in case it gets busy. But it is um, it is saturated like Etsy is. You know, you do have to work it, add new products, do email marketing. Um, you know, so that won't be the same experience for everyone. Some people might have even bigger businesses. If they're there are a couple different Facebook groups for FAIR. There's one that FAIR is not in, or at least officially. Mm -hmm. And then there's one that's an official FAIR group where they can respond to questions. So, um, but there are people who will share kind of how much business they do. And we compare notes. Is it slow for you right now? Is it busy? And this and that you can ask questions of other FAIR sellers, which is amazing. But there are businesses who do big, big, big business on FAIR. Mine feels very small. And some that, that struggle to sell anything because, you know, some products just won't, do as well. Some products are great on Etsy and that may not translate to selling to a retail store. Or you mean to change up the product a little bit too? A lot of my listeners are uh, do print on demand and digital products. So it mm -hmm. wouldn't really translate at all. But No, uh, right. Exactly. The, the margin is just not there for print on demand. Mm -hmm. um, I've started dabbling in that too, thinking it would be nice just to have some passive income on the side <laughs> since I need to uh, somehow scale back on my hours. I just thought it would be nice if I had something else coming in. So I've been playing around with print on demand and which is actually how I found you <laughs> initially, but oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. no, so that unfortunately the margin is just not there for that. But if there's other products that you're currently selling on Etsy that you don't think would necessarily translate to selling to a retail store, wedding items come to mind as something or personalized items that wouldn't necessarily be something you would sell in a store, right? They need more general can sell to just any customer walking in. So nothing personalized with name. You can personalize with towns. People love that for a store. But let's say you sell bride and groom mugs. I feel like that's not something that you generally just find in a in a boutique. Um, you might go somewhere like Etsy or a specialized store. So you might sell, you know, two bridal shops or things like that. So certainly put those on fair too. But then also think about what else can I put on a mug that would be more general. Something maybe you can make more of a sort of quotes or images or for mountain towns and then beach towns and, you know, anything that you can think of just to make it more general. So take your product, see if you can tweak it. If it's something that's just too specific right now. And I, that I will open so up. Many We've like need another episode. And also I'm just, I'm, I'm like all over the place too. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but it's kind of perfect. It's kind of like the perfect, you know, when you like sit down for coffee with a friend and you're just like catching up and you just hit 
on a whole bunch of, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's I'm kind just of brain like, dumping. So yes, <laughs> I want to say too, nice. your, your listeners can feel free to message you. I'm sorry. They can message me with questions. But <laughs> I'm sorry for the brain dump. It's a lot of information. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think it's been bad at all. And I'm also thinking like how fun if they want to send in a bunch of questions and then we do like a, we do like a second episode, oh, yeah. like a Q and yeah. a could be for super sure. fun. Like Absolutely. I like to, a lot of times people ask me questions and then I'll go dabble. I'm not dabbling in wholesale. This is not right. happening. Allison That's true. Girl. And I, it's hard to think of what, yeah, what, what do you want to know? Yeah. So send questions. <laughs> Maybe we'll Yeah. No, it would be super interesting, but I would love to hear like, what are some of the harder lessons learned? Like what tips do you have for getting started? Like mm-hmm. anything to help us um, not learn the hard way on things. Would be right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, learn from me. <laughs> yeah. like share my my ignorance that I started with. Um, I think the biggest thing is the pricing because again, when I was just thinking of doing, okay, I'll give another example. I'm going to back up and be messy again. <laughs> so I decided recently when I when the shelves took off, I stopped making jewelry. I decided recently to bring jewelry back um, just because I want something something else and different. I'm just making shells every day. So I kind of want to diversify a little bit. So I'd like to bring jewelry back. I have not sold it wholesale yet. And I didn't think, I thought maybe I wouldn't. I thought maybe it would be nice to have something that's just a creative outlet since my creative outlet became my business. Now I need a new new one. (laughs) And so what if I just make jewelry and only sell it in person at markets and I just, I sell what I make. Here's, here's what I have. So with that, I only... I only multiplied my, my costs of, and labor and all that by three thinking, Oh, well, it's, it makes it too high price. People wouldn't spend that again. Just self-doubt is the big thing. And so I priced it that way and it, it sold really well. However, it's not priced for wholesale at that rate. So now I'm thinking I might like to sell it wholesale after all. So I need to reprice everything. And I also need to realize it is worth it. <laughs> my time is worth it. My skill is worth it. I know we all, many of us suffer from imposter syndrome or thinking that, well, it was just so easy for me to make this. It's just my little craft. It's just my, but to someone else, it's this beautiful item that they will love. So people will pay it. You do have to make sure the market supports it. Um, my jewelry I'm working with is, is freshwater pearls and gold filled and sterling silver. So it can command a certain pricing. But it was just my doubt coming in thinking, well, surely no one would spend that. So I only marked up my, my cost by three. Shame on me. Don't do it. <laughs> do it by four. And then if you don't do wholesale, then you're making even more profit and even better because your time is worth it and your skill is worth it. And it may seem easy to you, but that doesn't mean it's easy to whoever is seeing it and buying it. To them, it may just be amazing. So I think that's the big thing. Price accordingly now give yourself the option of selling wholesale and then up to you if you do or not. And then when you decide to go that route, then you are prepared and then you have that, that cushion there. Um, So that's the biggest tip. That was my, my first mistake. Also, when you join fair, if you join fair, use the email marketing tools. I notice a direct correlation from when I send an email to the sales that I get, they Mm -hmm. work. It drives sale. People sometimes need to be reminded um, that you're there and they should reorder, keep new products coming. Because as a retail store, it's a little different. Our store is is touristy and seasonal. We don't have repeat customers. So we can keep the same products and no one will know. Mm-hmm. Um, most stores aren't like that. Most stores, it's, you know, people come in, they live in the area and they might frequent that boutique. And so they want to see new items all the time. So in order to keep the buyer coming to you as a vendor and not just leaving you entirely when they need a new product give them new products, come up with new designs for whatever you're making. So I'm constantly making new designs. You can then also pull some off that aren't selling as well. Um, but keep, keep going with the new products to keep vendor or the buyers coming back to you. And another tip that I want to put out there, just since I know what it's like from both sides as a buyer and a seller for wholesale, if a buyer stops buying from you, do not take it personally. That's, that's the thing with wholesale is the idea is that it's a long-term relationship and they're repeat buyers. However, that could stop at, at some point. Um, I know that from our store, there are products that we love that we buy. These are our favorite bracelets or these are our favorite candles or whatever it may be. And they just don't sell to these customers or the customers we have 
don't want that item. They don't like that price point. It doesn't work for the store. And it's so confusing for us because we loved it, but we missed the mark. Or (laughs) we've had people, other retail store owners come in shopping and they'll say, you have to buy this product. You have to buy it. Trust me, it sells like crazy one product I'm thinking of in particular, but I won't mention it, (laughs) what it is. And my mom and I both look at each other and think, I, we don't like that. And it's one of our best sellers to this day. Oh no! (laughs) So you just, sometimes you just don't know what will sell and what won't. And so your buyer may love it, but it just didn't sell. Or they may have carried it for a couple of years and it's time to make room for something new. So it's not personal. It is just business. They may come back later. I've had that happen. Someone didn't buy for me for two years and they just bought for me again this year. And great. But it's not personal. It's some, we just have to keep it fresh and that's the way it goes. But if you can think of new products to, to offer new styles, then that does help keep them as your customer. And then let's see other mistakes. I think um, kind of like we touched on thinking of products and how they may differ, different types of customers. You have your Etsy customers, people looking for gifts, personalized, very specific items, and then just your general customer coming in off the street into a boutique, what would they want to buy? So again, if you're doing a a very specific niche, how can you take that product that's niche down and just come up with more options? Mm -hmm. Using my product, for example, the shells, I have one product, I have oyster trinket dishes, right? They're the jewelry dishes. That's my product, but I have about 120 different styles. So I have, which I need to pair back, but I have bees and I have mushrooms. I don't like mushrooms. Mushrooms are really big right now. So Mm -hmm. keep up with what people are are buying. Mushroom styles, rainbows, there's nautical, there's tropical. So think about all the types of stores all over the world. There might be lake regions and coastal regions and desert regions and think about what you can do with your product and just grow it from there as many styles as possible. So I guess the opposite, don't niche down, (laughs) come up with, (laughs) no, you are, there are certain things like, you know, your cutting boards might be more specific, but um, you could, you know, add locations or things like that as an option. Um, But I think if you have something so profound, Mm -hmm. let me, let me say that you said something so profound. You said, don't niche down, but here's what people think. They think that when you have options like that, you're not niche down, but Mm -hmm. what you are is you're niche down by listing. So you're hitting niche, you're hitting micro niches. This is what I'm trying to convey Mm -hmm. so hard to my listeners. You're hitting micro niches within the listing as opposed to within making the whole shot. If you just try to mushroom everything in your shop, you're going to hit a barrier. Yes. But if you have mushrooms and you have strawberries and you have cherries and you have oxalotls right. or whatever else is trending on the t-shirts and the stickers mm-hmm. this particular month, you're going to do great. So yeah. you, you, that's so brilliant. You're, right. so you're niching down in the, maybe in the product, for example, yeah, no, it would be messy if I had tea towels and oysters and jewelry, like that would be confusing yes. for me as a retail buyer. So niche down on the product, but not the styles. Is that how you're, you're like, saying? You're like the peak niche. You're, you're only doing oyster dishes and you're doing it for every micro niche. Like yeah. you are a genius and this is why you're making a crap ton of money. So that's what you should do. Or our biggest seller in our store is tea towels. If you happen to make tea towels, if you know how to Who make tea still towels. Buys make... Tea to- I'm sorry guys, if you oh, do, gosh. they're adorable. We have, I, have... I can't even tell. It's our biggest seller. <laughs> we have multiple vendors of tea towels. And we have a joke. There are some days that I'll work at the store and I'll call my mom, guess how many tea towels we sold today? <laughs> we could sell like 40 tea towels in a day. I kid you not. No. Why? If you So, and I joked to her, I'm like, that's what I should have gotten into. I should have figured yeah. out how to have tea towels printed. So I wasn't I'm like, oh. <laughs> like, so if you can, I don't know if there's some way for you to No, do that's that. like the perfect or gift. Or Swedish like, dishcloth. Those are huge right now. So there are things like that. Easy to grab. Candles. Swedish dishcloths, tea towels, jewelry, all kinds of jewelry. I mean, I don't know. So maybe niche down on the product, come up with a lot of different styles. So if you're making a tea towel, then get coastal with it, get tropical, get mountain, get funny quotes, get heartwarming, get Mother's Day, you know, all the different possibilities that you could put on one product is the way to go because there's so many different types of stores that are looking for different things. Hey, my friend, I'm just checking in to see how you're doing on your Etsy journey. Do you have all the support you need? 
I'm so honored that you're here listening to the podcast, and I want to make sure that you also know that I have a bunch more resources that can help you with your specific questions over in the resources section of my website. Whether your focus is print on demand, digital products, handmade items, and even more, there are tools and freebies and courses specific to your product type that are made by experts that I have already vetted for you. I don't know about you, but when I started my Etsy shop back in 2016, I was a busy mama and I didn't have oodles of time that was spare that I could just spend spinning my wheels trying to figure out Etsy completely on my own. I needed someone who knew what they were doing to teach me as efficiently and effectively as possible. And as soon as I was able to leverage the knowledge of an expert, I'm telling you my personal results on Etsy went through the roof. Sales went literally from crickets to cha-chings within a week of implementing all of those things that I learned. So if you're looking for that kind of help, you want to get to the bottom of it, you want to get moving and grooving, where somebody who knows how your niche works on Etsy can show you the steps to start getting sales, come on over and visit my resources page at howtosellyourstuff.com forward slash resources. And I'd love to connect you with the perfect expert for your business. I know their expertise will make all the difference in the world for you. So once again, that's howtosellyourstuff.com forward slash resources, where you can find answers to your specific questions. I'll see you there. This is me writing down to do <laughs> SEO research on tea towels because I'm curious, but I cannot. I'm you, tea towels. We sell so many tea towels. I know. <laughs> No, that's so interesting. We that joke that we're the tea towel store. We have two big tables that are just lined with types of tea towels, all the different quotes. And some are just pretty watercolor and some are funny, funny little quips, but anyway. No, it's a good <laughs> gift. It's smart. Elson, this is, this has been so helpful. Thank you so much. Tell us um, yeah. where, well, let me start with this because I was asking you when we first started talking, I'm like how, like you're giving us so much information and there's really like no way for us to directly support you. Like to, it's not like you sell a course on wholesale or anything like that. No, I don't, I um, don't. But you had a great suggestion. So how, how can people support you and thank you for your time? So I, um, a couple of things, if you do have questions, I don't have a course, um, but if you have questions, because I know this was a, a jumble of massive information, feel free to to message me on Instagram. Uh, my my business page is Allison, spelled A L I S O N Brook Designs, and I'm there. You can follow me. You can send me a message. Um, there is also a a link to apply. Do you do so. You have to apply to be on Fair. I guess I should have oh, led with that. Wow. Um, okay. So uh, that's another reason. I guess have the the pictures looking, you know, as good as possible. You do have to have a website or an Etsy presence. So you need to be selling online in some capacity already. There is a link that they provide to current sellers. I have heard, though they haven't formally confirmed this, but I've heard that it does bump you up in the application if you use someone's link who's a current okay. seller. So I have a link um, that we can provide, but full disclosure, we do also earn money if people use our link. So with that, I just want to put it out there. You don't need to use my link. I just want to give you the information anyway. I'm not doing this for that reason. But if you do use it, thank you. <laughs> but mm -hmm. that's no extra cost to the person, right? Fair's paying you. It's not like an extra no, cost. No, Fair pays us just to refer new brands. That's perfect. That's an affiliate. Yeah. That's we love that. That's that's yeah. literally how this podcast is funded. So I love that. I'm going to make sure that her referral link. If you guys want to get on Fair and you want to apply, P.S. That application is probably why they don't have suspensions every five seconds. I so I actually kind of love that. That would save people yeah. a lot of heartache. I will include your referral link so that if people want to get started, they can use yours. And then it's a little mm -hmm. thank you to you, but it's also a benefit to them because it gets them a higher likelihood of getting accepted mm -hmm. because they're exactly. referring. Exactly. Also, y'all behave yourselves because you're representing Allison. I know you will. <laughs> I have the best listeners on the internet, the yes. nicest people. All I ever hear from anyone that they, that yeah. works with them, like the attorney, the tax people, we have the most kind, wonderful people on the your, internet. And your Facebook group is so lovely. Like the people oh. in there, I love how it's just positive because I know that that was much needed when it comes to Etsy. And it's like with anything, we all have complaints. I mean, fair is not perfect. Etsy's not perfect. There are, you know, there are things to complain about, but it's just a it's way so to nice complain. if we can just There's all like, help each other. And yeah, yes. exactly. There's a way to do it. So she's, she's talking about and the your free... Facebook group too. So if anyone's in there, yeah, if you, you, you want to post something, then we could 
do something there too in the comments. We could tag you. I'll, yeah. I will link the Facebook group. Thank you so much for saying that. I just, I don't like going into a Facebook group and having it raise my blood pressure. It's just no, not something I'm here for. No. So we're, we have a happy place. I will link yes. it for you guys in case you haven't joined it yet. And um, Allison's in there, but where are the best places to find you connect? So Instagram, um, at Allison Brook Designs. Mm -hmm. Did I say that right? Yes. yes. At Allison Brook Designs. Um, you can email me as well if that's easier. Just Allison Brook Designs at gmail.com. And my website, uh, if you're curious, is alisonbrookdesigns.com. Keep it easy. Oh, that's <laughs> good job on the branding, ma'am. Um, I will have all that linked for you guys. But Allison, thank you so much for your time. This has been so oh, fun. Like, fun. what a different it like kind of exhilarating <laughs> thing to talk about today. I know it's I fun. It's, it's a lot of different information, a lot of things to consider. I know, but it, it can, it can be a game changer, I think is just what I want to put out there. And if nothing else, it's just a new income stream. I, I fully believe in having eggs in multiple baskets. And we actually, did we touch on doing wholesale? And no, I want to just real quick, make sure people mm -hmm. know there are other ways to sell wholesale than just fair. I don't want this to be, I'm just pushing fair. It's more of the a way to scale your business and grow is by selling wholesale. i was just fair is how I did it. Um, so real quick, you can sell wholesale on Etsy. You can just create a discount code 50% off or 40% off or whatever it may be wholesale 50. That's I've bought from people or my mom has for her store that way from Etsy as well. You can do the same on your Shopify website, create a wholesale discount code. There are apps within Shopify that will create a wholesale like landing page. So it's all different pricing and other people will also create a whole new Shopify website. So it could be wholesale dot designs.com or whatever that has just, just wholesale pricing that way. So I just want to put that out there real quick. <laughs> you can also do wholesale in-person shows, trade shows. Those are huge. Um, there's a trade show season that just passed in January, February. There's big gift markets where people from all over just come and you have a booth and they buy from you for their store. So we could, we could make a point to touch on that in the future, but just real quick to put it out there and feel free to ask me any, any questions about those options too. But it's fair is not the only option and it's not the only marketplace. However, it has been devouring <laughs> the market. I will say other wholesale marketplaces have been closing because fairs become the giant. So, um, but there's, there's some other options out there, but it is the online trade show for wholesale. It is, like, exactly. At the end. And exactly. so here's the thing. I think it's great to start by offering a coupon on Etsy or on your website. You just have to know that then you have to go drum up that business. Mm -hmm. So no one's searching on Etsy for a wholesale for the most part. Obviously, sometimes exactly. you'll see that. You could maybe have something in your welcome message like, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, email me for wholesale pricing. That would be very wise to include in your welcome Absolutely. message on your shop or on your banner. Um, but otherwise, you're reaching out to stores. You're just using Etsy as that mm -hmm. website. Whereas on fair people who are intentionally looking to buy wholesale are, th that is the customer base. So exactly. Just That's why they're there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Allison, you are a goddess. Thank you so, so, so much. Thank this you so much for having me. <laughs> Y'all, I hope that you enjoyed this as much as we did. Um, I enjoyed it enough to have just done it with just alone. It was so fun. Um, but you guys, I love you so much and I will talk to you next week. And until then, go make something awesome. Take care, y'all. And that's a wrap on this episode of How to Sell Your Stuff on Etsy. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. If you're looking for more resources, head on over to howtosellyourstuff.com where you'll find podcast show notes, all the links from today's episode, the blog, courses, coaching, and more. If this episode was helpful to you, awesome. The greatest compliment I can receive from you is a rate, review, and subscribe on this podcast. Not only will it allow us to connect again on a future episode, it lets me know I'm providing you with value and helps other people find this content more easily. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for your support. Have a great day and see you next time.